What is it they say about falling off horses and what you're supposed to do when you fall off a horse? Well, that's what I'm doing here today right now. I'm back on my horse, back on the KLR 650. Yesterday, I had a crash and I decided, eh, I'm not gonna let fear get the best of me. I'm not gonna get out of the habit of riding this bike. I'm instead gonna let that bad experience teach me and be a better rider from it. So that bad experience, let's talk about it. Honestly, as crashes go, it was probably one of the best, one of the safest, one of the <laughs> least uh, deadly crashes a motorcyclist could have. And I'm extremely grateful for that. What happened was very simple. I was approaching an intersection in congested traffic, uh, an intersection where I knew it generally gets pretty congested, sometimes backed up, sometimes cars will stop short because things get backed up very quickly um, and very far back or further back than you expect. And so you, you end up seeing, you know, like I said, cars will stop short in front of you. And I knew that. I knew that about that intersection because I use that intersection frequently. So there I was approaching it on my bike and I thought, I don't want to be in this lane. In fact, I said that into the microphone. I was doing a camera test at the time, but the camera failed on me, but the audio was still recording. Let me wipe you off real quick. Audio was still recording. And so uh, it, as I, I went back and listened to that audio, and sure enough, I said in the, in the audio, in the, in the microphone, I said, I do not want to be in this lane. And I was looking for a way out of that lane um, while also waving to some fellow riders in opposing traffic and uh, looking, waving, didn't see the car in front of me, suddenly stopped short uh, with not enough stopping distance between me and him. So I did the only thing I could think to do, which was slam on the brakes. Now, I probably could have swerved around him if I knew for certain that my way was clear. I didn't know that though. I didn't know it was clear on either side of that car and uh, given the size of my KLR 650, I don't feel like it's nimble enough to sort of dart and jump between things. I felt a collision was almost certainly going to happen if I tried to dodge and jump around this guy. I didn't want to do that. So what I did instead, like I said, slammed on the brakes, front and back, uh, just hit them both hard. What that did was quickly slowed me down and then instantly locked up my tires when you're on a motorcycle and your tires lock up, all you riders out there know that's not a good thing. You gotta pump your brakes to stop properly or come to a gradual stop. But uh, locked up tires, unless you're a pretty expert rider, pretty much mean you're gonna fall down. And that's what happened to me. My weight was clearly off to one side and um, I couldn't keep myself upright, so the bike dropped at probably five miles per hour because I stopped almost all of the way. It's about five miles per hour, the bike drops. I fall, I hit the, the, uh, the asphalt and uh, there's a, seven, a second lane next to me and I'm concerned that I just laid down in that lane's traffic and I'm about to get run over by a car. So it's, that's my first thought when I hit the ground. What I do is pick myself right back up, roll back towards the bike as quick as I can as I look around, make sure that I'm actually safe. Now the car behind me had stopped and I can see that traffic all around me has stopped and people notice me, notice that I'm down and so I'm not gonna get hit by anybody, which is great. But of course, I wanna get out of the situation as quick as I can. So I pick up the bike very quickly, get myself up obviously, get the bike up, get back on it, there's a, a rider actually in opposing traffic. He shouts at me, hey, you okay? And I know I'm not seriously injured, so I just shout back, yeah, I'm fine. I get back on the bike. Fortunately, it starts right back up. KLR is not fuel injected, so sometimes it takes a while to start again after a drop. But uh, fortunately, started right back up. And I got going again. 
Now that whole thing, again, I listened to it again in audio um, after the fact. The whole, the whole scenario from the po- time I locked up my brakes to the time I was moving again was about 30 seconds. No, literally 30 seconds. So it was nothing. But, man, my adrenaline was pumping. And I realized very quickly that that could have been a lot worse. And I'm really glad it wasn't. So what did I do wrong? And what lessons can I take from that little crash? My first on-road crash. What can I take from that? Well, the lesson I choose to take from that is, number one, as a rider, pay close attention to your stopping distance. Always, whatever situation you're in, whoever you're following, wherever you're going, pay very close attention to your stopping distance. Make sure that you've got plenty. Keep it nice and big, okay? A few seconds, at least, I don't know, three or four seconds between you and the vehicle in front of you or the obstacle or the hazard in front of you. Keep, give yourself a good amount of clearance. Keep scanning ahead of yourself for obstacles, for road hazards, uh, for the next driver, for pedestrians, for anything, an animal that might jump out, whatever. Keep scanning ahead, cache that in your memory and deal with the road in front of you and then scan ahead again and just keep doing this. And that's riding. That's what you always have to do. You always have to have your eyes around the next turn, kind of like I'm doing right now. So aside from that lesson, what else could I take from this? Well, I would say keep good protective gear on every time you ride, at GAT, right? All the gear, all the time. Uh, I don't follow that perfectly because I don't wear protective pants typically. Um, But I've always got some kind of a jacket on. Uh, There have been times when I wear just a vest, but I don't like doing that. And I'll generally go back to a vented uh, mesh jacket instead of a vest because it's way more protective. And that drop, that crash that I had yesterday, again, it was super low speed. Five miles an hour is about the speed that I hit the ground at. But um, even so, I was very lucky to have my jacket on. The jacket protected my elbows, protected my shoulders, which hit the ground kind of hard. My hip hit the ground hard, and I've got a paramilitary two-sized bruise on my hip right now, because that's where my my knife was, and that exact spot is what made contact with the uh, the pavement. So, (laughs) that's kind of funny, but it's also like, eh, it kind of hurts a little bit right now, and I'd rather not have that. Uh, I did not have boots on yesterday when I was riding. I've got them on today, because, again, learned my lesson. It didn't make a difference yesterday. Now, I I hit my upper body more than I hit anything else. So uh, the fact that I was wearing sneakers with a little, you know, shift protector on made no difference. But still, I would have felt a lot better had I actually been wearing boots and known that my feet were properly protected uh, for whatever the hazard might be. The number one piece of gear, obviously, that every rider should always wear is a helmet because... That's your brain box, man. And if you if your head hits the ground at high velocity, you know, game over. You're done. You've you've got no other options there. There's no recovering from that. There's no putting a band-aid on that. You're just over. Come on, shift. There you go. You're just over, so you don't want to hit the ground at high speed, or at any speed, with no helmet on. So, if you're going to wear no other piece of protective gear, always have your helmet on. I always will, always would, always did. Uh, Even when I just drove a scooter in college. But uh, that helmet is the most critical piece of gear. Always have that on. Short of that... Your brain, dude. Your brain is your most important piece of safety gear. Keep scanning ahead. Keep your eyes around you, on your surroundings. Um, Be aware of what's coming. Be aware of what's ahead of you and what you're coming up to. Uh, That will help you avoid accidents. That will help you stop or, or, you know, uh, get around obstacles, road hazards, and what have you. And that truck right there, I knew he was going to run that. I could tell. 
you kind of, after a while, you learn the body language of vehicles, if you know what I'm saying. You, you start to see what a, a vehicle's doing, and you're like, that guy's going to run it, that guy's going to gun it, that guy is going to be a hazard to me. And you very quickly um, start to know what's going to be a hazard to you. All right, I think I've spoken long enough. That's a story about my first on-road crash. Uh, I hope it's my last for a long, 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 long time. And if and when another one comes up, I hope it's only as bad as that one was. The bike is fine. A scratch here and there. My new Tusk panniers got a little bit of a gouge in them, but man, they are tough. And they actually kept the bike at a nice angle where it was easier for me to pick them up or pick it up. So that's pretty cool. But uh, I am not concerned about the, the state of the bike and my personal, you know, my wellness. I'm totally fine. So net benefit because learned a couple lessons the hard way. Late Boy Scout, thanks for watching. We'll talk to y'all later.